describe the multiplication property of inequality. So if we have three numbers, a, b, and c, and all three are real, and c is positive, then these two inequalities are going to be equivalent. a is less than b is going to be equivalent to a times c is less than b times c. So for example, if we have 3 is less than 5, which is a true statement, if we take c being 2, then we can see that this statement will also be equivalent. It will be a true statement. 6 is less than 10. Now, what happens when c is not a positive number, but instead c is a negative number? So if c is negative and we have the same situation as before, this inequality sign switches directions. So if we have 3, again, is less than 5, which is a true statement. If we take 3 and multiply it by negative 4, and we take 5 and multiply it by negative 4, we must reverse this direction of the inequality symbol, because negative 12 is greater than negative 20. Now this property also applies if a is less than and equal to b, then the equivalent statement would be a times c is greater than or equal to bc. And it also works for division, because division is a representation essentially of multiplication. This is an example we're going to solve for the variable x. And we'll notice here that this inequality has a negative coefficient of negative 6. And when we want to get this x to have a coefficient of 1, we need to divide both sides by negative 6. Now, because of the multiplication property of inequality, we know that any time we divide by a negative number, we must reverse the sign of the inequality. And we can see here that negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. Therefore, we have 1x. And then this division is negative 7. So here we have the solution set of x is greater than 7, negative 7. Now, often we want to graph this solution set. Negative 7 is the only value that we're really worried about uh, in, in terms of this graph. And we see that x has to be greater than negative 7. So therefore, we have to shade to the right of negative 7. And because it's not equal to, we have a parenthesis, which represents that negative 7 is not included in the solution set. And this transfers beautifully to interval notation where we would have negative 7, which is our leftmost value of the solution set, not included. Therefore, we use a parenthesis and not a square bracket. And it goes all the way out to infinity. This is an example of solving an inequality. So we recognize, hopefully, that this 2 is being multiplied by this whole quantity, and 3 is being multiplied by that whole quantity. So we have to use the distributive property. So negative 2 will be distributed to this as a, as a product, multiplication. So we have 2 times negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 5. Negative times a positive is a negative, and 2 times 5 is 10. Our sign remains the same uh, for the inequality symbol. And again, we see the distribution property is required because this is 3 times this entire quantity. So we have 3 times x, which is 3x and 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15. And now we solve this using the properties of inequalities of addition and subtraction. So we want to get all of the variables on the left-hand side and all the quantities on the right-hand side, because we recognize that we don't have any exponent greater than 1 for our variables. So if we add 10 to both sides, we'll see that this quantity becomes 0. So negative 10 plus 10 is 0. So on the left-hand side, we only have negative 2x. We still have our greater than or equal sign. We still have our 3x. And here, this combines negative 15 plus 10 would be negative 5. Now, we've almost achieved our goal of getting all of our variables on the left and all of the constants on the right. We need to eliminate 3x from the right-hand side. In order to do that, we want to do the inverse of Addition, so we want to subtract 3x 
from that side, because 3x minus 3x would be 0. And 0 plus negative 5 would be negative 5. So that's why we can do this. So on the right-hand side, we'd have negative 5 greater than or equal to. And we have a negative 2. And we're going further to the left on the number line of negative 3. So negative 2 minus 3 would be negative 5. And then that's multiplied by x, which is our, uh, our coefficient of negative 5. And here we're going to we're going to use the multiplication property of inequalities, which is also incorporated with division. So if we divide both sides by the coefficient of this x. Here we'll have negative 5 divided by negative 5, which equals 1. And then we have 1 times x, of course, which gives us our x. Now, because we're dividing by a negative number, we recognize that we must switch the inequality sign. We must reverse the direction. And then negative 5 divided by 5 is 1. So our solution set is x is less than or equal to 1. Now, if we want to graph that solution set, again, we would label this x. The number we're really concerned with is 1 to show our solution set. Now, we want less than 1. So it's going to be to the left of this value. And because we have less than or equal to, Equal to means that 1 is a potential solution. Therefore, we have to include it with a square bracket on our graph. And again, this translates very nicely into function uh, interval notation if you have it or need it. We know that our leftmost value is negative infinity. We're going all the way to 1. And 1 is going to be included in the solution set. So we had solved this, and we had moved everything to the left-hand side of the equation, or the inequality, sorry. We, need, we could, if we wanted to, we could move this variable over to the right and have positive coefficients as we solve. So we wouldn't, wor we wouldn't need to worry about multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So through inspection, we would see that. So if we added 2x to both sides of this inequality, we would see that, again, 2x minus 2x is 0. So those reduce to 0. And 0 plus negative 10 is negative 10. And that's going to be greater than, here is our quantity of 3x plus 2x, which gives us our 5x. And again, if we don't want to deal with reversing the sign, we can see that this is going to be a positive uh, coefficient. So when we divide, we're not going to need to reverse. So we'll have negative 15. And in order to get rid of this negative 15, we're going to add the inverse of that subtraction. So this represents 0. And 0 plus 5x is 5x. And here we have 15 minus 10, which is 5. So we have to still divide by this 5 as our coefficients. And 5 divided by 5 gives us 1. And now we have the inequality x is greater than or equal to, or sorry, 1 is greater or equal to x. Now, how would we then say that that is equivalent to this? So is 1 greater than x, greater than or equal to x, is that equivalent to x is greater or equal to 1? And the answer to that is yes. You could think of it as a mirror, this equal sign, if you want. And if we flip this. This one will go over to the far side. Notice here, this is where our reverse is going to occur. And then we're going to have x. So these are the exact same inequalities, demonstrating the same solution set for this inequality. In this example, we're going to solve an inequality. We're going to incorporate a few things. Uh, we need a least common denominator. We want, a, we want the least common denominator so that we can multiply the entire inequality to eliminate these fractions. So as we look at 4 and 7 and 1, if we consider this is over 1, we see the least common denominator from 4 and 7 is going to be 28. So if we multiply the entire equation by 28, I highly recommend writing the number 28 times each of the terms as you would in the distribution property. Now, this indicates that we have 28. And again, we could write over 1, as I mentioned earlier. And we can see that because we have this multiplication of a fraction, 
we can reduce a factor in the numerator with a factor in the denominator. So there's a factor of 4 in 4, and there's a factor of 4 in 28, which leaves us 7. And as we can read this, it, it reads 7 times this quantity. Remember, this fraction bar is a grouping symbol. So we have 7 times this quantity. And we apply the same technique to this second component. So we see that, that 7 has a factor of 7 in it once. And we have four factors of 7 in 28. And now we have negative, or our subtraction, of 4, again, times this quantity, which is represented by the numerator. And then this is going to be greater than, this would be negative 1 12, if you use your calculator or did the work on the side. Now notice. The key to this step that we just did was to eliminate all the fractions. And now we can use our distributive property and addition and subtraction properties to now solve this inequality. So we see we have 7 times this quantity. So we would have 7x. Then we'd have plus 63. We have negative 4 times x, which will give us negative 4x. Then we have negative 4 times 4, which is 16, and this is greater than negative 1 12. Now, we know that this inequality has our imaginary line of what divides the inequality from both sides, like an equation, like an equal sign. And because all of these terms are on the same side, we simply combine them. So if we combine 7x minus 4x, that would give us 3x, and 63 minus 16 would give us plus 47. And this is going to be greater than our negative 112. Now we see that this, this doesn't look too much like a 7, so I'll make it a little better. So now we need to solve for the variable, get it by itself. So we need to get rid of this uh, 47. So we want to do the inverse operation of this addition of 47. So we want to subtract 47 from this side. And we want to subtract 47 from this side. And again, this represents 0. And 0 plus 3x is simply 3x. So we have 3x is greater than negative 159. And now we have a coefficient of x, which is 3. We want to divide both sides by 3. And we now have our solution set of x is greater than negative. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 3 goes into 9 3 times. So our solution set is x is greater than negative 3. Now if we're asked to graph that, we would get our number line, label it as x, because that's our variable that we're describing our solution set as. And we want greater than negative 53. So we're going to have an open circle or a parenthesis. And we're going to go to the right to describe our solution set. So every point on this line to the right of negative 3 represents a solution to this original inequality. And again, this translates beautiful to interval notation, where we have negative 53 with our parenthesis, because it's not included in the solution set all the way up to positive infinity. And positive and negative infinity always have a parenthesis and not a square bracket as part of the solution.